Okay, guys, so I've wanted to do this for a while. I've wanted to uh, go through, go back, and check out our old vidIQ channel audits from back in the day. From uh, That was about three and a half years ago. Uh, maybe a little more than that. It was late November, early December of 2018. So when we got these done, uh, I had just recently become a fan of vidIQ at the time. Uh, the channel, everything was a lot different back then. <laughs> Obviously, his channel, Rob, well, I only recently learned Rob Wilson doesn't even own vidIQ. I thought he did forever. Uh, but uh, no, it's interesting. I watched a long interview with him. Um, so it's interesting uh, to see how he's grown too, his channel. But the purpose of the channel audit, one thing that I do, uh, purpose of the channel audit, one thing that IQ does is they uh, kind of help creators um, from an objective standpoint as far as what they see with their channel, what needs improved for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and, and check these out. I have not watched these all the way through in a long time, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to have my face in the bottom corner uh, doing some reactions to it, and then I'm going to come back in this and, and talk about it again, some of the things, the biggest takeaways from it. So let's, uh, let's dive right into that. Okay, the very first thing I want to say is, wow, even vidIQ is so different. Watch this intro. All right then, apologies for the brief delay there. Let's try and get this show on the road. Today, we're talking about Article 13. Let's do this. Unbelievable. VidIQ. VidIQ. VidIQ.com. Wow, this is old school. Hello, everybody. Rob Welcome back different. to VidIQ. The channel VidIQ has grown so much in the last three and a half years. He has all kinds of other people that help him. Uh, there's gonna be another guy in this video, but he's got all kinds of people now. Like, it's incredible how much he's grown. So shout out to Rob. But uh, I'll fast forward here to the, to the audit. Okay, so these were something he called like rapid fire audits or something like that. This was our first week on here. I had submitted this and uh, back then, he didn't have as much activity. Like, uh, the vidIQ live streams were not that popular back then. So it was kind of easy to get picked for a channel audit. So he got me on the rapid fire audit. So here we go. Community tab. I know that for some people, they'd be having to wait a, um, a week or so to get that community tab. Next up, we have Sticky Situations. I saw this channel and I, was, I wasn't really sure where to go with this because I don't know how appropriate the content is. It looks like a reaction uh, channel on content that you're watching but then you were talking about kidnapping and you're wearing a balaclava in your thumbnails and i was just wondering whether uh, again the age appropriateness of that content that's it looks we'll as if you're doing later. very well on certain trends here like some videos get 100 uh, like 600 views but then others get thousands of views and i think it's those videos that you probably want to be um the, the trends in those videos that you want to be following certainly yeah i mean look in the last I guess these last three or four videos were community videos, and you can always tell how those affect your yeah. reach and viewership, but sometimes you need to do videos. those to talk directly to your audience. Uh, pretty much like these live streams, we know that these live streams don't necessarily do as well as our video on demand, but we want to have a direct Got conversation with you, the audience, in these videos. So yeah, maybe that, I think that, certainly that, looking, that, theme, looking wow. at what's performing best, the video the video series that are performing best wow. on your content and concentrating on them. I think one more thing as well is uh, some of the text is difficult to read yes, on uh, some of your thumbnails. And like, for example, on a channel banner, I don't even know what that says, even if I use my magnifying glass. So I think maybe some graphical cleanup uh, might uh, help you. Very uh, good yeah, advice. just generally speaking, maybe there's too much going on in your thumbnails. Like there's four faces there. Maybe we need two faces that are more zoomed in with a better reaction. Uh, so maybe some, just keep working on your thumbnails there. But 10,000 subscribers, congratulations there uh, on breaking that recent landmark. And yeah, you seem to be using... Uh, Rob, I don't think Rob was very happy when he saw the uh, TubeBuddy. Oh, subscribers, congratulations <laughs> uh, here. Uh, on breaking right here. that recent line. I don't think Rob was very happy about seeing TubeBuddy, the TubeBuddy placard. Uh, I only use the vidIQ placards uh, typically these days. I only have vidIQ installed, and Rob says that's the company that he does not say its name. 
obviously, as competitor there. But uh, shout out to him for not uh, hating me for seeing two buddy. Mark and yeah, you seem to be using uh, uh, the community tab as well, which is <laughs> awesome to see. Next channel, Carl Ma. Okay, okay. So that was a that was a that was a speed audit what he called like rapid fire channel audit or whatever that was just I randomly shot into and he said some things like he said you don't know how appropriate the content is well he didn't click the about tab so I ended up emailing him telling him hey you know click the about tab you know can we uh, do the full channel audit the next week instead of the rapid fire audit and he said yeah sure yeah he read it and he said yeah absolutely you know uh, remind me and I'll make it the first channel you know great guy Rob I mean he uh, it's gotten a little harder for him to communicate with people now, I think, because he's had some people kind of come in and kind of take things over in a lot of ways. Hopefully, he can get us. He'll get us back on uh, for a new audit for the for the crime scene, because as you saw there, that was a sticky situations audit. Um, so long ago, ten thousand subscribers, obviously, but and you notice the points he made about graphical cleanup and. Uh, the, the not reading the text on the banner. I mean, sometimes I respond to criticism not the best, I guess, but I take things into account. I take things to heart, and I think I actually fixed the banner before the following week. We're going to find out here in a second, but I think I actually fixed it. But uh, there's some things to talk about there at the end, but okay, now I'm going to fast forward in time here, and I'm going to load up the full audit from the following week. People ask uh, big fundamental questions like, I need more views or I need more subscribers. Those people haven't gone through the the YouTube struggle, I think, at that point. And when you when you go through the YouTube struggle, you start to answer those questions yourself. And I think only you, in your particular genre, your particular story and circumstances, only you can start to answer those types of st those types of questions. And if somebody tries to answer that question for you, then you'll never understand it. It's, it's always that lightning bulb moment when a, a video gets like a thousand views instead of ten views, and it's like, oh, something happened there. Like, and I. I did something right. I just need to replicate that. And I think it's Good that advice. voyage of self-discovery, which can be so powerful. But I think a lot of video creators have to realize that you have to go through that journey. Nobody, nobody can teach that to you. All right. Here we're we going to do some more Q&A with the audience here in this live stream in a little while. But first, we're going to do some more channel audits. Jeremy, I'm going to share this one with you. I did a very quick audit on this channel last week, and I completely misinterpreted this channel. So what I want is your first impressions on this channel. And then hopefully this video creator is still in the chat and he can help explain the, the understanding of this channel. Because, yeah, Jeremy's looking at this channel now probably going, what on earth is this? So this is a good example of channel first impressions. So, Jeremy, take it away. What do you what? think this channel is about? I fixed the banner. I got rid of that red text up there. Um, and I listened to it. He, he was right. Uh, it, wouldn't, it would be a little while before I really cleaned up more of the thumbnails and got rid of. I started using orange text instead of red text. Uh, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> kidnapping women? <laughs> That that's exactly you know that's exactly what I thought when I first visited this channel. Uh, because there's women, they're all tied up, and this says the kidnappers' corner. <laughs> yeah. So this looks like a scary channel, doesn't it? I'm gonna. I mean, that. at first glance, it does yeah. not look inviting. It looks ter It looks like basically with the black and the red. Yeah. You know, color psychology and color theory. And women and gags um, are all, you know, visual and, you know, cues yeah. to make me like say, okay, is this bad or good? Yeah. Like, is this, is this a bad place? I probably wouldn't let my nine year old daughter look at this. Yeah, channel. exactly. So, so, stick, so, sticky situations. This is something that I wanted to stress is like people visiting your f channel and people and like the goldfish mentality of, I, 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 I'm going to, decide whether I want to watch this channel in five or ten seconds. The, a lot, I think 
a lot of you, a lot of people are going to go, whoa, this looks a bit scary. But you have 10,000 subscribers, so you're obviously doing something right. Awesome. You told me to read the about section, which would maybe help describe what your channel is about. So, Sticky Situations is the world's first only DID themed entertainment brand. Damsels in Distress Entertainment and Pop Culture. This is a Kidnapper's Corner, a long running program which highlights reviews and best DID scenes ever. So, I think you're a channel that watches. Uh, kidnapping scenes in television or in movies. Does that maybe sound right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, in addition to that, we also produce and distribute our own live action uh, content. Uh, it's fictional, advertise, and so he says it's fictional, advertiser friendly brand, and it's for entertainment entertainment purposes only. So the disclaimer here is all like we do not promote violence against anyone, etc., etc., etc. So if you, if somebody digs deeper into the channel you can start to get an understanding of what this content is uh, potentially about. With that being said, Jeremy, how can we make this channel, I guess, less terrifying to a potential viewer and more inviting uh, to try and further explain what this channel's about? If that's possible, because I, I just do not know where to start with this channel. Well, I think, you know, there's there's always um, perception, right? Yeah. Uh, there, almost every movie ever made, every action movie ever made, there's a damsel in distress. There's the... the I want to pause this because I understand, and obviously Rob has said this before, you know, and he kind of said this, touched on this at the beginning of this before it got into the channel audit. He said, you know... Um, it's very the YouTube's very personal. Only you know your audience. Only you know what you're trying to accomplish. And when it comes to listening to people about your channel, you really have to take stuff with a grain of salt. Now, when it comes to the colors, like how the red text was on the banner and how the thumbnails are hard to read, that's not really personal. That's just general best practices on YouTube. But keep in mind, this was coming into 2019. Okay. And in 2019, I believe uh, it was around this time, not too long after this, where the whole made-for-kids content thing started to arise. These problems that, you know, this whole issue with content made for kids and uh, getting losing personalized ads, you losing access to the community tab, comments, channel memberships, really having your channel... Um, handcuffed no pun intended uh for targeting children and i don't think this has really popped up yet uh maybe it had started to but take listen to some of the things he's going to talk about and then we'll talk about it after a beautiful woman that you know gets taken by the gorilla or whatever right there's <laughs> always the damsel in distress <laughs> and uh disney does a very good job in making this situation not feel like i'm gonna about to get murdered uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> So I, I think that um, changing the imaging, the messaging, the, the color schemes, um, the removing the kidnapper's corner, like I, I can promise you long term, uh, using the word kidnapper and kidnap um, on Google properties is probably a, 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 a losing strategy because they're looking for these type of words, yeah. um, you know, to, to remove, to be put on watch lists, to be put on government <laughs> lists. Um, these, you know, I understand what he's saying, but when it comes to entertainment and Google searches, kidnapped and kidnapping actually do extremely well. He may not be aware of this while he's saying that, but our first live action title is called Kidnapped. It has millions of views. Um, there's a reason for that. He may not have been aware of this at the time. I understand what he's saying, but again, it's kind of what Rob said. Uh, you have to, you have to pull back and make sure the person knows exactly what they're talking about before you take the advice. And in this case, I mean, I, I get the whole thing what he's saying, but it's not entire. It's not really accurate. So, regardless, if you know, you're completely super nice guy and there's, you know, nothing wrong visually looking at it um, with the words that we know, you know, Google properties are, are definitely monitoring and Facebook is getting involved as well because of our elections in 2016. Um, there are some keywords you probably shouldn't use. So my opinion would be to change up the, the look and feel to make it more in the spirit of damsels in distress versus 
kidnapping because to me those are two different genres one is um a storyline and the other one is is seems evil um and that's a, that's an opinion this is just my opinion yeah, yeah. but i'm just you know i think someone could make a damsel in distress channel with videos talking about these scenes where is pg and super positive yeah uh th- I, well, I don't know if you heard that sound effect. That was just my football team conceding a goal. Uh, not forgot to turn my notifications off. So, yeah, I think uh, sticky situations, it's, as, as I think Jeremy and I both said now, first impressions uh, are something that should take your channel down a different route to what probably your fans, audience and you understand as your channel. How you try and, do, how you try and improve a channel in that sense it's a tricky one, and I think no doubt uh, what you'll probably do after this uh, like, uh, this second audit is you're going to scrutinise it and you're going to post out another video talking all about it, and I'm, we'll be yeah, happy to watch it. it again. Yeah, I'm doing it three and a half years later. Doing it again. Because <laughs> because the last one was hilarious, but yeah, I think given the uh, response here from Jeremy, I and the comments. And I don't know, like, what your history is with YouTube, whether they've demonetized your content and whatnot. Uh, certainly an interesting channel to look at. Uh, but best of luck. Uh, yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed there that you can continue to grow your channel uh, safely and appropriately in the YouTube universe. All right. Um, Jeremy is now going to uh, breathe a sigh of release there, relief there that we've managed to uh, negotiate that channel. And we're going to now move on to uh, one of our... Okay. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to the to the full screen now. So just a, a special shout out, thanks again to Rob for for doing that uh, for us. Hopefully we can do this again. I want to do a new channel on it here three and a half years later. First one ever for the crime scene, and I want Rob to do it with a group of his his panel, especially a female. He has women on doing channel audits with him. I would love to have a female. Uh, help him out doing the channel audit for sure. But uh, thanks again. Um, you know, sometimes some of the best advice uh, is the best adv- is the advice you don't take. And in this case, when it comes to some of the things Jeremy said, boy, am I glad I didn't listen. Um, now, with the with the with the rapid fire audit, some of the stuff Rob said uh, when you're talking about the visuals, the red text, the blurriness, how he couldn't read anything. You saw that I fixed the channel banner uh, right in between audits. Um, he didn't catch that. I was hoping he would he would have seen that. But uh, and I've improved on the thumbnails a lot since then, for sure. He's he's right. He talks a lot about thumbnails, and he's right. You know, those those are general best practices for all YouTubers uh, when it comes to the clarity, the visuals, the organization of the channel. Um, and uh, yeah, so I took that. I took the thumbnail advice to heart. The best advice he gave me for sure. Uh, when it comes to some of that stuff, Jeremy said, I you know I heard it at the time. And Rob said all this before. He said you know some of the you know you you got to know yourself. You got to know your own channel. And he has said before when it comes to people um, giving advice, you have to take it with a grain of salt because they don't know your audience and what you're trying to accomplish the way you do. And obviously, you know, the stuff Jeremy was saying, you know, especially when he brings up Disney. And he said, I wouldn't want my nine-year-old daughter watching this channel. Well, technically, his nine-year-old daughter is not supposed to be on YouTube. That's the thing. You're supposed to be 13 and up if you're in the general YouTube space. And now our disclaimer says, you know, it is made for everyone over the age of 13. Because not long after this is when the made for kids stuff happened. Okay, the made for kids stuff absolutely crushes a channel. If you have your videos or your channel marked as made for kids, you have no personalized ads, you lose the community tab, you lose comments, channel memberships, so many things. If you're a made for kids creator these days, those channels have went through the ringer. And I am so glad. That's one of the reasons I strayed away from cartoons and doing things animated. I had talked about in the past possibly getting into that, but the walking that's a very dangerous uh, path to walk on when you're talking about making stuff for kids. That is just as bad, if not worse, than trying to make age-restricted videos 
making videos that are made for kids. Being, being G rated or even PG rated is just as dangerous for a creator as being R rated. You really have to be PG 13. Like you have to fall in the middle on YouTube to have success. Um, you know, it's better to, it's probably better to curse in your videos a little bit than to try and, you know, again, make yourself look like you're made for a church audience. Uh, honestly, it's probably better that way. So it's a good thing I didn't try and convert the channel into this family friendly oriented thing, which obviously I had no intention of doing from the start, but um, you know, sometimes a person's advice does need to change based off of changing factors like the made for kids stuff. But he may not have, uh, that, I don't think at the time that was something he was thinking about. So, oh, got something in my eye. Um, yeah, I, I get it. I, no, I understand where it was coming from. That, it's funny to look back on that. So long ago, everything looks so different. But hopefully we can get a, a, a modern channel audit uh, for the crime scene with the modern vidIQ. That will be fun. Um, yeah, so hopefully uh, hopefully I'll get that going soon. I'll be in one of those live streams and uh, send them that. Rob featured uh, the channel about a year later, actually, uh, when it came to contacting YouTube. I don't know. I don't think I have that uh, saved. But, uh, no, he, he knows us well, and hopefully we can... Uh, we can get that uh, get that going. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed that little trip down memory lane here uh, with these channel audits. And uh, yeah, so, you know, a lot of fun. But uh, I will see you guys soon. Thanks.